This is a download from BFM 89.9, the business station. The Property Show on BFM 89.9, the business station. Good morning, you're listening to The Property Show on The Morning Run, our weekly take on everything property related. We have heard a lot on the subject of housing and property, topics such as affordable housing, property overhang, and access to loans, which are some of the many subjects that has been discussed. So Property Insight is Malaysia's leading property magazine where it provides insights and information on the subject of property for developers, agents, investors, and buyers. So joining me this morning is Dato KK Chua, the CEO of Armani Media and Editor-in-Chief of Property Insight to speak about his company and the role they play in the property sector. KK, thank you for joining us on The Property Show. Thank you for having me, Saris. So you are a serial entrepreneur with more than 15 years of experience as a registered real estate agent, and also you're a property investor yourself. So what inspired you to pursue publishing? Uh, I was a property agent myself 15 years ago. Uh, I did some transactions. From there, uh, from there on, I get to know that through property investing, you can actually make some money. For example, uh, the first uh, deal that I did, I saw, I managed to see the S&P. Uh, the owner bought it five years ago. Five years later, he made a, a clean two million out of that transaction. So from there on, I get to know more and more uh, property investors. So that's that's how I started learning how to invest myself. And uh, what inspired me to publish uh, Property Insight? Uh, by the way, Property Insight has been around for the past uh, six years. Mm. Why I started Property Insight is very simple because I want to build a community for property investors. Back then, when I first started, the only way for us to get in touch with property investors is through attending all those courses by property gurus. Mm. They're going to cost you probably at that time about uh, four to five thousand which uh, not many people can afford that. So I thought how best uh, we can do it uh, to cater for this segment of property investors. So this is the main idea why uh, we we come up with this uh, Property Insight magazine. Did you meet investors and they tell you that there is a vacuum or a gap that needs to be filled? Hence, telling you it would be very helpful to have a platform where you can have all this information for investors. Or is that something that you thought of on uh, your own? Yes, uh, very good questions. Uh, yes, we did. We did. Uh, we did do our some some of basic research. Uh, for property investors, there are different different category of that. We have category one, two, and three. Of course, three being very seasoned property investors, where they have all the availability of fundings. They have all the you know insights on where to invite and how to in, uh, invest. So basically, our magazine will be catering for the you know uh, people that just started out to become a property investors. That type of community, uh, because I believe back then was five years from now. It, they will be a somebody. They will be a seasoned investors. So we have talked to because I myself was under a, a category one property investors back right. then. So this is how we see the the gap in the market. That's why we we are filling that up. Okay. So besides investors, who else are your target audience? Who else could benefit from property insight? Uh, our, of course, our main focus will be on property investors. Uh, of course, first-time home buyers also, we are catering for that needs. And uh, all the industry players like property agents, uh, uh, valuer, uh, architects, you know, anyone that is in this industry, they are also our subscriber and our readers. Okay. In my introduction, I mentioned that, you know, some of the things uh, that has been discussed within the property sector is property overhang. And there has been a lot of discussions on that, uh, as well as affordable homes in Malaysia. Yes. So has your magazine been able to reach these target audiences and also provide a sort of solution to all these problems? Uh, yes. First thing is the, the the target audience that we have right now will be from uh, millennials to Gen X, uh, mostly 20 years old and uh, up to 45 years old. Uh, this will be the category of uh, people that are hungry for information. They want to learn new skills. So we are providing them that kind of platform to facilitate or to uh, build them up 
on all the basics of investing. Uh, so once they, they have get the hang of it, uh, you know, they, they have progressed themselves, then they'll be more prepared to, to make a right uh, investment move. So definitely this will be the target that we are uh, focusing on. Hence, uh, this and affordable housing, we, we, we are also doing a lot of contents uh, towards, to get towards that affordability side. For example, in our articles, we cover a lot on, you know, loan. How do they get the financing the right way? And also, how do they uh, reorganize their lifestyle, mm. especially amongst the millennials, uh, where these days, you know, uh, bubble tea is a craze right That's now. Right, yeah. um, and guess what? 15 bucks for, for, for uh, you know, a brown sugar bubble tea. So it also serves as like a financial advice as well. Yes. Mm. Uh, on top of that will be the checklist that they got to have when they will do their first uh, property purchase. Uh, you know, a lot of this a lot of the mistakes that because we, we, we meet up with a lot of property investors, mm. if they just have a proper checklist, all those mistakes can be easily avoided. Okay. So and also S and P, what are the things to look at in S and P, uh, and you know, do how how do they identify the 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 right area, the right projects that they can invest in? Because in our magazines also we have a area analysis we call area focus. Every okay. issue. Yeah. So you do provide insights with regards to how to plan financially when one decides to invest in a property. Yes. But besides those information, you know, what other topics can your readers find in the property insight? Uh, of course, every issue will have cover story. We have main features. Uh, we are quite fortunate because we are a magazine, which means we our focus is not so much on news centric. Our focus we we can go, which means every topics that we have relevant topics topics that are sensitive towards the industry, we can do a very in-depth analysis. We can also do a write-up that is, uh, you know, uh, more more holistic mm. rather than just reporting per se. And uh, also in our magazine, we have investors next doors, rookie investors, personality of the month. What you see is a trend because what we want to highlight is more like a people-centric kind of stories right. whereby we go and interview the, sub, uh, the people that matters, the investors that matters, mm. and we ask them the relevant questions. How do they feel? How do they go from this level one up to level two? How do they acquire five properties and now they own 30 properties? Wow. So all are those questions that you know can really uh, we hope can give uh, inspiration at the same time can give uh, some very valuable learnings to our readers so you mentioned valuable insights that come from the ground um, so who are these writers and who are these individuals that produces all these articles for property insights uh, okay, we have a very strong team. Uh, uh, we have uh, our editorial team. We have uh, three writers, one editor, and I myself will be the editor-in-chief. So what we do is we always go out, get the story, ask them the relevant questions because we we already have a community of investors. They are very close with us. Some of the KOL, key opinion uh, leaders in properties, they are also our contributors. So from there on, we get the topics that is relevant and people that is, you know, the, the people that actually within the industry for us to interview. So we only interview people that are real investors. So to the extent that uh, before they tell us, okay, I actually own five properties, mm. they actually need to show us the SMP that they have. Are they a full-time writers? I mean, or are they just volunteers, meaning because they love property investment so much that they're more than happy to share in the form of writing? I would say, yeah, I would, a good 30% of them, they are just uh, average Joe. They have their own job. They just want to contribute. I see. They just okay. want to write and share their experiences. You know, what are other services that Property Insights offer to its reader? Okay, our site will be, uh, besides property magazines, we also organize PRISM. PRISM is Property Investment Summit. It's the largest uh, gathering of property investors in Malaysia. Every year, we'll do it once. At our peak, we have more than 2,500 participants. Okay. So the interest level for this kind of uh, exchange uh, uh, sharings is very high among this uh, investors community. Mm. Besides that also, we organize PIPDA, which is Property Inside Prestigious Developers Award. It's uh, one of the very sought-after property awards in Malaysia. And... Uh, 
Of course, we also publish a guide to investing, property inside guide to investing every year. We have been publishing it for the past five years. Uh, it's available in all the major bookstores. And uh, our site also, we do some, every month we'll, we'll have a private event whereby we will have some talks, sharing, seminars with our readers. There is a lot of engagement on the ground yes. so that investors could meet the experts. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> okay, Dr. KK, we'll continue more on our discussion and we'll have more on The Property Show after these messages. So stay with us on BFM 89.9. If you've just joined us, this is The Property Show. I'm Sharid Abdullah and I'm speaking to Datuk KK Chua, the Editor-in-Chief of Property Insight. So KK, earlier we spoke about um, the many programs that you organise, for example, PRISM and also PIBDA. But before that, let's talk about some of the other players that are in the scene in this property sector. There are the property websites out there which they provide information and news on property, as well as other services like Property Search Engine and also AI, where they try and find a match for buyers and also their property. Now, how do you differentiate yourself with all these other websites? Uh, if you're talking about websites, I think most of the websites available in Malaysia right now will be uh, property listing portals. But of course, being property listing portals, they also have uh, they also create some of the contents. Mm. Uh, but uh, mostly on uh, analysis of the on the projects. But our site is uh, because we always challenge our editorial team. The first question they have to ask is: Will this article? Or will this content give value to property investors? And the second question is, uh, if yes, then how? So before we embark on any articles, they have to serve, they have to answer these two questions before we green light any of the articles. Mm. So hence what I'm trying to highlight here is all the articles that we churn out will be very property investor centric. And uh, since we are not a property uh, listing portal, so content is for us very important. And um, we, we also look at adding values uh, to the projects where, li- where, 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 where we look at. Uh, we talk to the developers, the banks, and even the estate agent to get the pulse on the ground in terms of property investment. So we cover news as well, but we also have in-depth analysis and people-centric in our stories. Like what I mentioned to you earlier on, is is the peop- how we differentiate ourselves at the end of the day is the stories of property investors, mm. which right now uh, in the market, not not many people spearheaded on that kind of segments. Right. Is Property Insight the go-to source for all these other property websites? Yes, some. And uh, the, the, the other indicator you can look at is some of the people that we interviewed from average Joe, now they become a property guru. I see. Uh, so basically it's all about targeting how we position ourselves. Uh, our positioning have not changed since day one which is to cater for the needs of property investors. And uh, on right now on the digital surface, uh, which is a website, we are focusing more on video content. Mm. And uh, because these days, a lot of changes has been made. We in fact have our own uh, uh, this uh, property uh, property online show called Kembara Hatana, okay. which has uh, been very well received. Uh, we, we are running on third episode. Every single episode, we have more than half a million views. Is it uh, broadcasted on the internet or is it on the uh, national television? Only on internet. I see. Only on internet, on our website, on Facebook, all the social media. Every episode, we will go and visit one area. It's like a exploration, discovery of an area. So within that area, we will highlight the projects in within that area. And every episode, we will teach our viewers, uh, we share with our viewers uh, what will be the right things to invest in, the, the investing tips and some of the mistakes that normally uh, average Joe will make. Uh. Mm. Yeah. So it's really targeting the different type of audiences that yes. you have. So you mentioned about PRISM and you also mentioned about PIBDA as well. So recently you concluded your fifth installment uh, of the Property Insight uh, Prestigious Developer Award. Mm-hmm. And uh, could you tell us what is this award about? PIPDA has been around for the past five years. Uh, this year is our fifth year. Uh, this award ceremony is to recognize the excellence among developers in Malaysia that delivers in value creation, design through their track records, as well as concept. And this PIPDA award is all being audited by uh, our local accounting firm, HML & Co. And this year, we are very lucky to have a uh, 
very distinguished panel of judges, which are uh, Izumi, president from PAM, which is Persatuan Architect Malaysia. We have Dr. Sohardi from Ilham, uh, which is a uh, president for Landscape Architect Malaysia. Eric Lim, president for Malaysia Institute Estate Agent. Uh, Dr. Dov De Roos, New York Times bestselling author for uh, Riches in Property, as well as Dr. Paul Kong, uh, ED from Savills, Malaysia. So furthermore, this is the only property awards uh, recognized by KPKT. KK, could you tell me what inspired you to organize this award for the property sector? It first started with one of our articles because every year we will highlight uh, top 30 uh, projects to invest in every year. It's, a, it's, 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 it's like a list that we come up with every year for the past six years. And from there on, we receive some emails, some of the interactions we have with our readers. They say, hey, why don't you do, uh, you know, a, a property awards? Yeah. Uh, because the that list in itself is also for us, we have through our criteria, through our checklist, mm. we come up with so-called the winners, uh, the top 30 projects that we think is good for property investors. Then our readers telling us a hey, uh, in the market, at that point of time, in the market, we only have, uh, I would say we only have two other award organizers. So, but of course now we have like uh, close to six and seven other award organizers. So from our readers, re- reader, our readers actually encourage us to do this because from the list of uh, top 30 projects to invest in, mm. that's how we get the idea. Why don't we organize our own? That uh, Because at the end of the day, what we want to achieve is we want to differentiate between good and not so good developers. Ah, okay, which is important basically for all the investors as well as home buyers out there as well. Yes. How often is this ceremony being organized? Is it once a year? Yeah, it's only it? once a year. Right. And, uh, and every year, uh, selected winners mm. will bring them for a, a property study tour. Last year, we brought a group of them to uh, Jakarta mm. to visit all the big developers over there. Uh, Chiputra, Jababeka, all the all the big developers over there. This year also we'll be bringing uh, a group of selected winners to visit Tokyo, Tokyo developers. Oh, right. So every year we have that exchange. Why we want to do that is same thing, we want to build community among all the developers and we want to have a cross-border kind of dialogues for them to have a networking with their counterparts from uh, different country, mm, so that they can learn different technologies yes. and different methods of, yes. of construction. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Tell us what are some of the key takeaways or even highlights with the recent uh, PIBDA award. Uh, PIBDA is a recognition not only for developers to push benchmark further. It is also a verification for their purchases that these people make the right decisions. It's also a great morale boost for their staff and their supporting teams, for example, bankers, valuer, architect, consultant, landscapers, etc. Mm. So this, in a way, uh, in essence, is us building the community for all the property developers. During that day, you will see the gathered of all the who's who in the industry, uh, all the players in the industry. I think it's, it's, it's a very uh, welcoming scene mm. where I can see it because even though they are competitors in a way, it's like uh, within that fraternity. It's mm-hmm. a gathering within that fraternity. And our site also, every one uh, once a month, uh, we will have a gathering okay. for all these award winners, our PIDA award winners, uh, through dinner, mm-hmm. okay, whereby they can share their, you know, uh, their challenges, their experiences with the rest. Right. So it sounds like there's a very strong sense of camaraderie within the property sector. On that note, you've been listening to The Property Show. And again, KK, thank you so much for joining us today. I've been speaking to Dato KK Chua, the CEO of Armani Media, as well as Editor-in-Chief of Property Insight. Coming up next, we have the 10 a.m. News Bulletin, followed by Enterprise. So stay tuned, BFM 89.9. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to bfm.my or find us on iTunes. BFM 89.9, The Business Station.